Hello again, guys uh, and gals. A couple of you guys out there. Uh, I got a review that I'm actually kind of excited for. Um, one of Austin Adams from ANA Tactical, uh, one of his employees reached out to me. Uh, he must have seen that I had expressed interest in this thing. Uh, so we've got the T-Rex Arms Ready Rig. Uh, I know I clowned on the AC-1 pretty hard, uh, and it deserved it. It's still, uh, you can't convince me that it's a good plate carrier. Uh, but this thing I was actually excited to check out. Um, and I've, I've been on the verge a couple of times of buying one. Um, not necessarily because I need it, but I just found it an interesting product and I wanted to check it out. And uh, I have high hopes that it can be uh, something good. So uh, T-Rex Arms Ready Rig, we'll throw this on the table and look over it. I'm going to look at it pretty closely, just like I did the AC-1, uh, because I still have some concerns about uh, construction on here. And they just did some things interesting, so I think it's it's kind of cool to, to look at it a little bit more closely uh, because they didn't really have the background in the nylon products aside from a couple of pieces. And you can kind of tell that from looking at these. So let's throw it on the table and take a look at it. All right, so I'm gonna do my best to keep this thing on camera the whole time. Uh, it's gonna get kind of long once we open it up. So uh, I'll do what I can. All right, so looking at the TRX Arms Ready Rig, um, they, they did a pretty good job, T-Rex did, of kind of pushing out information about this when it was getting released. And they had some really good video breakdowns, both of this and the AC-1. Uh, so kudos on them for that. Like, they were trying to be uh, as upfront with information as they could. All right. Uh, a lot of jokes were made when it got released that it's a Unity clutch with straps. And I would have gladly made those jokes as well. Uh, they're fairly true. Uh, it definitely has that look to it. But there's... It's different, right? This is a chest rig versus uh, a unique belt. Okay, so uh, built-in pockets. It has, for all intents and purposes, a AC-1 cummerbund on it. It is not actually an AC-1 cummerbund because it's sewn into the rig, uh, but it has the same layout. So if you like the AC-1 cummerbund, uh, you may like this in, in chest rig form. I I like it more in chest rig form than I did in uh, on the plate carrier as a cummerbund, All right? Um, and then up front you have three uh, built-in M4 mag pockets, All right? So uh, you can kind of see the ride height here. So let's get this closure flap out of the way. Uh, the ride height it leaves a good bit of mag exposed, maybe too much mag exposed. I'm not really, I'm not sure. Uh, my feelings on that. But uh, if you like to wear your chest rig real high, uh, I, I typically do, uh, it doesn't work as well. Like if I was going to run any chest rig uh, low, this would be the one that I do. And uh, I would try that out. However, I don't want to mess up uh, the gentleman that sent it to me has it all adjusted for him. I don't want to mess up his sizing. Uh, but I don't think anything's lost there, right? I could absolutely run it lower and and understand how that works all right so uh, we'll get the mags out of the way here just so we got a little bit less weight flopping around and uh, getting in the way all right so first things first uh, you can see that the uh, built-in mag pouch is uh, sewn to the end of the cummerbund so this this whole get up is essentially two pieces this side, for all intents and purposes, is the AC-1 cummerbund with a longer flap on it, whereas this side has the three mag pouches built in. Uh, off the bat, you can see whoever uh, loaned this to me has absolutely used it uh, and used it pretty extensively. So it's showing a good bit of wear, uh, which I'm not going to harp on too much because I don't know how much he's beat this thing up. And at the end of the day, it is elastic and elastic is going to wear. All right, uh, it is more worn than uh, most of the elastic stuff I have, but that doesn't mean that he's not running it much, much harder. All right, uh, but like my ANA Tactical JPC Cummerbund that has a lot of time on it isn't showing quite this level of wear, but I'm also not using it for my three primary magazines. All right, um, the front flap uh, for all the Velcro that it has on it. Uh, is indexing with the Velcro on just the front of the, the magazine pockets there. And it's not, it doesn't marry up quite the way I would hope. 
Um, this end is fairly unprotected here uh, and could, could potentially snag and pop off pretty easily uh, because that one mag is not, not a lot of Velcro holding it on. All right. Uh, I don't know the best way to fix that. Maybe having uh, both ends be the, the Velcro flap and have a magazine insert might have fixed that. Uh, but then you would potentially run the risk, and I think T-Rex addressed this in the videos, I didn't go back and watch them all, that they didn't want hook uh, on the interior, which makes sense to me because uh, that would just wear up your, your garments, right? Uh, I'm not quite sure what the uh, loop on the inside is for. Unless they were planning on people adding bungees, I, I hope that was the intent because that was one of the immediate things I noticed is with that much mag exposed, I would like to have a bungee. Even if the bungee is going to live off to the side of the magazine just as extra tension, I would definitely want it on there. And then uh, the, the open bottom, take it or leave it. I'm not a huge fan of the open bottom. Uh, it would have been nice to see deeper elastic and just have a, a closed bottom. Uh, but when this got put out, elastic, I think, was still difficult to get. So that maybe came into consideration. All right. Uh, looking at the sides, like I said, uh, it's got the kind of the pistol cell, uh, rifle cell, and then just kind of bigger. Um, the bigger, again, would have made more sense to me with a closed bottom, right? You're going to want to have whatever's in here in an actual package or make sure that it's something bulky enough that it's not going to work its way around uh, your bottom loop there. Uh, and then getting into the back, I was just playing around with the adjustment. I'm not quite this fat. Uh, it has a uh, full adjustment in the back, just like a plate carrier almost, just like the, the AC1 in functionality, uh, if not uh, exactly the same. So you've got this, this separate piece here uh, that the, the shoulder straps anchor into. Uh, so you can, you can size anywhere from, uh, basically I would, I wouldn't want to go any smaller than, than matching up the Velcro. Cause then you're going to get some, some goofy bulk issues and you're going to destroy this elastic here. Uh, but you can go anywhere from uh, complete overlap on the Velcro to probably a little past halfway and still have decent continuity. So there's a good bit of, ju of adjustment in there. And if you needed more adjustment, um, I'm sure I'm sure some of the custom guys out there could come up with something like making a, a bigger version of this flap that you would just have to reconfigure your straps onto. It is odd the the flap is a little small, but it does let you get the the rig a little bit smaller too. Okay. Uh, the the nice thing here is you don't have any hook on the inside. Uh, kind of the cost is. Uh, it gets to be fairly bulky for what you're actually doing back there. So they could have uh, potentially cut some corners on uh, Velcro, maybe. Not really sure because you, you still want the, the full coverage there. So maybe not so much, but um, it gets to be a little bulky because you've got four layers of Velcro and then kind of some elastic on the ends here and uh, this full sandwich. I don't know. Just finding things. All right, it's not bad. I think the straps are integrated into the vest in kind of a or the chest rig in kind of a neat neat manner. Uh, so you've got these metal larger D rings on the back, uh, which give you some nice movement on the straps. And then on the front, you've got some one inch metal D rings with a little portion of one inch webbing uh, that feeds into one and a half inch webbing there. Uh, so you have some nice width on the shoulder straps, uh, but in theory, it, it reduces some of the bulk going into the, the front of the rig there. And then you have this little uh, piece of material sewn to one of your shoulder straps to kind of help enforce that this is a X harness. Um, I don't know if that necessarily, the, the strap specifically, is necessarily something that you need, um, especially since you could you could disconnect this, uh, this shoulder strap, pull it out, and then have an H harness, not the most stable H harness by any stretch, but you could make it an H harness if you wanted to. Um, and with the length of this, this piece here, unless you figure out where you want it and then throw some tape around the strap, it's not really keeping anything from moving. Uh, you can see it, it slides around and it'll, it'll flip over real easy. Uh, but it was, it was a nice try, 
right? Like their, their heart was in the right place on that. And if it worked a little bit better, it would be a pretty solid feature. Um, the, uh, the back here, kind of interesting. I was trying to figure out if there was any way we could use this for anything productive. Uh, you've got kind of this pass through where they, they anchored the straps on there. Uh, but I don't, I don't really, I'm not, I'm not coming up with anything that you could use that for. Um, <clears throat> uh, construction wise, the stitching looks pretty decent. The materials seem pretty decent. Uh, the shoulder straps are rather thin, uh, but that could just be that it's worn, uh, and, and broken and it might've had a little bit more stiffness to it. The webbing down here definitely feels like the webbing that I'm used to. Uh, so I, I could believe that this is just well used. Um, I think, I think it's, it's kind of cool. Uh, it has interesting capabilities, right? It's kind of a fresh take on a micro rig. It's a micro rig with a cummerbund that actually has a purpose uh, versus just a side strap. So kind of a fresh approach. Um, it's wildly overpriced in my opinion. Uh, I think it's still a hundred and I want to say it's almost the same price as the AC one. I just looked at it the other day, but I'm having a brain fart. It's probably 150, if not $180. Uh, and I think this one also has the goofy Mexican variant that you can buy or made in Mexico. Um, maybe that is the way to go. I'm not sure. Um, and then I know I've seen some knockoffs of these. I don't want to, I don't want to pitch knockoffs, but they're out there. Um, but yeah, I, I think if it was more, more reasonably priced and I hate to harp on pricing too much cause I don't really do it for anybody else, but the construction on this is so simple and the materials are so straightforward that he could sell it cheaper, but I don't know if there's any value in, in T-Rex doing that because I, I think they're still selling out. So his pricing is probably where is appropriate for his customer base, but I don't, I wouldn't pay list price for one of these. Um, <clears throat> that said, pretty, pretty low profile. Uh, the front, some issues, the overall, not a bad setup. Um, kind of neat as a grab and go. What would be really cool is if they found a way to put this shoulder strap on this half of the rig. And the reason I say that is because when you open it up, you're not really making it any easier to get into. Uh, if this shoulder strap was attached to the other half of the rig, it would completely open up the shoulder straps. So you would literally just have to throw the rig over your shoulder and it would go on. This one, you still got to kind of swim into, which uh, with as high as uh, this gentleman has it riding is kind of a challenge. Like I got to take off my hat and my glasses to get into this um, efficiently. <laughs> Whereas if it was on this side, you could throw it on over body armor, over a helmet, and, and not have any issues. Um, so that's the T-Rex the One ready rig. Hopefully it didn't come across as a, a, a hit piece like the, the AC-1 video. I definitely thought this was an interesting concept, and I was excited to look at it versus feeling obligated to look at it to tell some of you guys to stop wasting your money. Um, but yeah, AC-1 ready rig. Much more excited about that than the AC1. Still wouldn't pay the, the price that it's marketed at. Thanks, guys.